Welcome back to Auto Amateur. I'm James, and in this episode, we're going to be installing Apple CarPlay and Android Auto into this beautiful 2014 GT3. Let's go check it out. <laughs> DIY video for this CarPlay solution that I sell on my website and shameless self-promotion, autoamateur.com forward slash shop. Uh, you can get these Apple CarPlay and, uh, and Android Auto wireless and wired solutions uh, from my website that uh, I've um, partnered with Joy Auto to provide 20% off the market rate and free shipping. Um, and you get me to help you install them, not just with these DIY videos, but on the phone, instant message, FaceTime, whatever you need, wherever you are in the world, I'm gonna help you install them. I've done over 100 now, in fact, it's probably getting close to 200 around the world, and it's phenomenal. These things work really well, um, and I can't wait to show you how it's gonna look inside this GT3. But although this is just a you know regular DIY video, look at the subject we have to work on. This gorgeous, gorgeous GT3, one of my favorites, if not my favorite model, the 991.1 GT3. Um, let's just go nuts about that for a second. But anyway, let's get straight to the install. Um, now, a couple of things. There are a couple of gotchas that I'm going to call out along the way in the video uh, to make sure that you don't fall into those into those pitfalls um, that other people do. Um, I'm also going to be installing a backup camera in this GT3 today, so I'm going to be showing you how to do that and integrate it into the Joy Auto. Um, so let's go and have some fun. Let's just get to it. All right, let's start by removing the head unit. In the 991 and the Boxster and the Cayman, it's essentially the same. In the McCann and the Cayenne and the Panamera, instead of taking out the center trim, you're actually taking out the air vents on the left and right of the PCM unit. But check out my channel and there's a more detailed step-by-step -step guide there to show you exactly how to remove the PCM unit. Let's take a look at what comes in the box. We've got a wiring diagram, which is fairly helpful now that I've done it, you know, a hundred times. The first time I looked at that wiring diagram, it actually was quite intimidating. So what I'm going to do here in the video is I'm going to lay everything out in a second and put it all together so that you can sort of visualize how everything goes from wire to wire, end to end, from the PCM unit back to that multimedia box. Here's your 48 pin adapter. That's really important. That goes into the back of the PCM. Here's your microphone, which you're gonna be installing later um, inside your steering wheel column. This switch is only required for the, uh, the CDR31 and this circuit board. Usually you're gonna be going inside the head unit for a PCM 3.1 or a 3.0 or a 4.0, but for the CDR31, you're only taking off the front screen. So go through and make sure that you've got all these pieces in the box. I haven't come across a kit yet that has been missing anything, thankfully, touch wood. But we're going to have a quick tour and see how everything kind of fits together. Okay, let's talk through this wiring diagram and uh, try and bring it to life a little bit. Uh, because, you know, basically I hate these things. So we've got the CDR31 unit here. And what we're going to do is take out a few screws and then we're going to pr gently pry off um, the top of the screen here. Um, for this particular job, you don't actually need to go inside the box. Um, with the PCM 3.1 and the PCM 4.0, you do have to open up the box and put in an additional circuit board. All we're doing here is some work on the back of the screen to put a couple of new um, ribbon cables, which then come out and connect to this multimedia box. Um, so we're gonna do that first, but before we start putting all of the wires in the car, let's just sort of conceptually see how everything fits together, okay? So we have a wiring adapter here. 
Um, the one that comes out of the back of the PCM basically looks exactly like this. This is gonna go back into the back of the PCM unit. And this here is gonna to connect to the one from the factory that came out of the back. So we're essentially creating an additional input here um, by tagging on this extension. Um, so when you're back in the car, the one that's inside the, uh, inside the dash is gonna plug into here. And very important point, we're gonna relocate the fiber, the, the fiber optic cables for the sound if this car is equipped with Bose or Burmeister and transfer it from here directly into the back of this wiring harness here. If you see just on the, the right-hand side there, we've got the, uh, the four holes. Well, the fiber optic port is this one on the far right with the two, uh, I'm covering up the one that's, um, that we're not gonna use. The one that you can see there with the two uh, little circular holes, that's the port you're gonna put the fiber optic wires into. So that goes like this. Um, we have an audio cable, which you need to connect here. And this runs all the way down through the dash and plugs into the other end of the Joy Auto wiring harness. And that plugs in here. We then have uh, another wiring harness here, which plugs in to the back of this extender. And this takes us all the way back down and actually plugs into the Joy Auto box itself. And this is what we're gonna store and secure up and under the driver's footwell. On the back end of this bundle, we've got a couple of options here where you can add a forward cam or a backup cam, and you've got the power for the forward cam and you've got the power for the backup cam. Now, when we take the screen off the unit, we're gonna have these cables here um, to install, and we'll get to that later in the video. One of the ends of this cable comes and plugs into the circuit port um, the, um, the ribbon cable port on the circuit board. Uh, and this is gonna sit behind the unit inside the dash. Um, and then we've got a video cable essentially, which plugs in here. And then this terminates over here in the green port on the back of the Joy Auto box. And then we've got a couple of other things. Um, we have another cable here that goes out of this port and comes over here um, into, into the box, and this fits into the touchscreen port. Um, and then finally, finally we have the Wi-Fi antenna, which I've just connected, this AUX audio pin, which needs to go into your AUX port in, it's usually in the dash, um, some 911s have them in the armrest. Um, either way, it needs to go in there um, and then finally, for this particular model, instead of using the Navi button on the front of the PCM unit, which uh, for PCM 3.0 is usually here, um, you can see that we don't have that on this option. Um, we just have an info button. So what we have here is a manual switch, a manual selector, and this is gonna sit just sort of around the side of the, um, of the center dash. Um, so you shouldn't be able to see it, but if you need to flip, manually back and forth between PCM and this, instead of pressing Navi, you basically reach around and just push this button instead. Um, that's maybe, you know, one, um, one thing I'm not massively keen on for this particular solution because with the PCM 3.1, 4.0, it is all completely integrated. So this is the only third party uh, piece of kit that you're gonna see in the console. And even then, unless you're looking for it, you're not gonna see it because it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be um, hidden. All right, I like to organize all of this stuff into different places before I get started. The wiring bundle pulls apart and you're gonna to wanna to just stretch it out and now we're gonna see how some of the different cables fit together. You've also got your ribbon cables and you've got your circuit board. Again, for the CDR31, your circuit board actually comes in this metal protective case and you're gonna be connecting it to the exterior. Here's the audio cable, which runs from one end of this wiring bundle to the other. It doesn't go into the multimedia box directly and it doesn't go into the PCM. It's gonna go into either end of this large wiring bundle.
Here's the second half of the wiring bundle. So click together the two gray ports and then at the other end, it goes into the back of the multimedia box. All right, now we're gonna remove the screen. Unlike the PCM 3.1 and 4.0, you only have two screws to remove here, one on either side of the screen, and they're just Phillips head screwdrivers, no Torx bits required. Once you've taken out the screws, you've then got about a dozen of these little tabs to just push and release. You can either do what I'm doing here, which is use the flathead screwdriver and go under the plastic and use your finger to push the metal tabs down, or you can just simply use the flathead screwdriver to push the metal tabs down and then use your fingers to lift up the plastic. Either way, as long as you're careful, you're gonna be just fine. Here on this very bottom edge, I'm having to use two different tools just to make sure that it all comes off. And then carefully remove the screen. So no ribbon cables to deal with as you take the screen off. The ribbon cables are gonna come into play here now as you build your bridge. So this L-shaped ribbon cable is gonna allow you to piggyback off two of the ribbon cable ports on the back of the circuit board to add the additional input. And essentially all you're gonna be doing is taking out the factory ribbon cables from this large port here and the smaller port right above and then just piggybacking them into that L-shaped cable. So the factory cables are gonna come out and go into the ports in the Joy Auto wiring harness, and then the spare cables on the wiring harness are then gonna go back into the factory ports on the circuit board. Now it's really, really important at this stage of the job to make sure that these ribbon cables go squarely and securely into the circuit board ports. A lot of times you think you've done it okay, but they're just slightly out of alignment or they're not in far enough, or you haven't secured the little clip on the back of the port. And when you go and put everything back together and put it in the car, you'll find that you're not getting any video whatsoever, not even the factory PCM screen, or you're not getting any audio. And nine times out of 10, I find that it's because these ribbon cables haven't been secured properly. So just spend an extra minute or two making sure that they're in the right way, they're sitting square, they're in far enough, and they're secure in place. Now, not the prettiest part of the job. Um, you don't need to do this for PCM 3.1 or 4.0, um, but here on the CDR31, you just wanna make sure that nothing is gonna short because this ribbon cable is gonna fall back on itself. So just extra careful Make sure everything's covered up with electrical tape and you'll see in a second just how it all fits together. Here note that the blue side needs to face up. The ribbon cables look like they can go in either way, but in actual fact they only have connections on one side and that's where they face down. So the blue side needs to be facing up. Now here I'm just doing a little bit of insulation again with the electrical tape. I know it's not pretty, but don't worry, once it all goes back together, you'll never know that anything's been attached to your PCM unit. It'll look factory fresh. Okay, now we're gonna put the screen back and just reverse the steps that you did previously, making sure that the ribbon cable can just sit out within the little groove in the metal bracket that sits below the plastic trim there. There's actually a little spot where the cable can naturally sit and it won't get in the way of any of the clips that hold the screen in place. Now you're just gonna put the screws back and we're gonna go and start putting it back into the car. Now you can choose to do this here like I'm doing in the video just so that you know I was able to get a good camera angle and lighting or you can choose to do this in the car. I prefer to do it here just to make sure that the connections are as secure as possible. Again, make sure the blue side of this terminating end of the ribbon cable is facing up. Make sure that it goes in and sits flush and then put the port connector down so it's not going anywhere. 
Now this is a little tricky when you go to put it back into the cavity of the dashboard because you're going to need to make sure that this fits right at the very back, standing upright behind your PCM unit as your PCM unit goes in so that it all fits back into the dash correctly. You could secure it to the back of the PCM unit, but I wouldn't advise that. All right, now getting back into the car. Before I start putting the PCM unit in, I'm gonna run the cables from the dash through and underneath the steering column tray and then down into the footwell. Ultimately, these cables are gonna run all the way to the far rear side of the footwell, but just to get it working and just to make sure everything's working correctly, I'm just gonna run the cables any old which way I can into the footwell and pull them through so that I can get the PCM unit hooked up and tested. You can worry about making everything look pretty right at the end. Now, here is the secondary switch cable. If your screen, for some reason, doesn't automatically switch over to Apple CarPlay, you're gonna have this little extra switch button installed on your center console, which is gonna allow you to just manually go from PCM back to Apple CarPlay. And the wire is long enough for you to put this anywhere you want. I chose to put it here on the right-hand side, just on the bottom edge of the passenger side of the center console. You could choose to run it around by the stalk on your steering column so that it sits with your cruise control um, or your electronic display controls. It, it really is up to you. You can put it any way you want. Now you can check out my auto amateur channel for a more detailed DIY step-by-step -step video that'll show you how to put the head unit back into place and run all the wires and secure the box. Um, the purpose of this video is just to focus on the differences essentially of the CDR31 installation, which is really all about when the PCM unit is out of the car and you're on the workbench working with the circuit board and the ribbon cables. Okay, here's the fuse that I've used on this first row. Uh, I think it's D1. Um, this is switched. So when you turn the ignition off, um, and I've got the ignition on right now, when you turn the ignition off, this little blue button should go off as this little blue light should go off as well. There. Let's remove the bumper. And for the DIY step-by-step -step video, check out my channel. All right, we're gonna use this drill bit to drill a hole in the back of the bumper. Uh, this is a scary part for a lot of people, but don't worry, it's very easy. As long as you keep the wires out of the way underneath, so you're not gonna drill through and break the wire harness that feeds the lights for the license plate, you'll be fine. I like to measure it up so it's smack bang in the middle, use a little dot to mark the place, and then drill the hole. Now, the camera will usually come with a locking nut, which you'll put on the inside edge of the bumper, and a couple of gaskets like this, which allow you to create the right angle for your backup camera. Some people like the camera pointing right down to the ground. Others like to have it pointing a little up. So in this particular box that I sell, it comes with four or five different options. Now, you can see here, I've threaded the wire through the bumper first, and then I'm putting the locking nut on the back the gasket is actually sitting between the camera and the exterior surface of the bumper. Um, I chose a relatively flat one, as I think the, the wide angle lens on this thing is just superb. Um, so you don't really need to angle it down too much. Um, secure the locking nut in place, and then start running the wire. I like to run the wire along the factory wiring harness, which means if a tech in a Porsche dealership is ever taking off your bumper, they're gonna know that there's a rear camera there that's been installed aftermarket. All of the wires are held together. I like to use red zip ties so that it's really obvious that there's something uh, tied there. And then essentially the connection sits right by where the connection is for um, the Porsche factory wiring harness. So as the tech takes off the bumper, 
it's all there together. You can disconnect the battery and you can disconnect the lights. All right, so let's check out what I did. Here you can see the locking nut in place. You can really just keep it hand tight if you want to, but I like to just use a wrench and fasten it down a little bit. Then you can see that my wires are running flush next to the factory wiring harness. So again, if a tech takes off your bumper, they're gonna know there's something extra there for them to worry about. I've had a couple of people run wires in different places and unfortunately, if the techs ever take that bumper off and they don't know it's there, um, the wire can get pulled and you can lose the camera. Uh, here is a pretty clumsy video, I'm sorry, uh, of the exterior and how it sits flush. Uh, you see that it sits just a little bit back from the edge. Um, I have it in the middle, left to right, but in terms of depth, I usually put the hole a little further back. All right, now let's run the cable. Uh, this is actually straightforward, uh, and I've come across a different way to do it than uh, in my uh, previous videos, where I was running them along the under edge of the door sill. Um, going from the back of the bumper and along through the uh, the wheel arch. Um, this grommet here, and this is the same grommet whether it's a GT3 or a Carrera or a GTS or what have you, this grommet here on the right hand side just underneath the deck lid goes straight behind the back seat in the interior. So you just pull off the little plastic grommet and then start feeding the wire through, maybe just push it through six to eight inches and then go into the inside, pull out the trim and the back of the car and then start feeding the wire through. This trim at the back is actually really easy to pop out. There are about three clips, one on the left and the right and one in the middle. Just pull from the top with your fingers or with a trim tool uh, where the glass comes down and meets the trim. It pops away, you don't need to take it off all the way. You can just pull it back and you can get your hand in there and you'll feel the wire. I'm now pulling through enough cable so that in a second, I'm gonna be able to go and start running it through the other side of the car. And it's really just a case of running it around the trim and using a trim tool to push it into place. Once you get this around the back portion of your seats, um, this thing just, tr just pops straight back into place. Super easy. All right, back outside the car, I'm gonna run the terminating end of the cable, just around the trim, which is on the upper edge of the deck lid, around the heat shielding. I'm gonna run that cable around where the driver's side light is. Now, in order to do this, I am gonna start taking apart the trim a little bit like you might do if you were doing an oil change, just so that you can get the wire snugly in and around the trim. Here I'm removing the fan on the left and the right. They just pop out. In this case, I didn't need to disconnect them like you would do if you're doing an oil change, um, but you just wanna get a little bit more room so that you can get the wire in and make it invisible. Now, you don't need to worry about this wire overheating. Um, there are other wires behind there you can see. And if you keep it behind the trim and away from the engine, you'll be just fine. And as you run it down into the engine compartment, into the lights, again, if you just keep it on the right side of the, the, uh, the heat shielding, you'll have no problems. All right, so let's take a look. Here's where I've pulled up the grommet and that can go back in place. The wire then comes down just a little bit around the back of the trim, around here and down, and then into the cavity where the reverse light goes. Now, once all the wires are in place, you wanna make sure that you're checking and testing the backup camera uh, before you continue to run the wire. Um, here I'm now back inside the car obviously and I'm running the wire down behind the trim that comes alongside the carpet and then into the door sill, under the door sill and around into the driver's side of the cabin. Every time I put a couple of feet of wire in place, I maybe don't need to do this, but I'm checking the camera, plugging it in and powering it on, putting the car into the reverse just to make sure that nothing is broken or been damaged along the way. Sometimes if you're a little bit too heavy handed with the wiring, the wiring can buckle. The wiring in some cases can even snap if you're pulling on it and it's snagged against a piece of metal on the inside of the trim. And if you don't check the camera until the very end, you're gonna have absolutely no idea where that fault is. So by checking every foot or two to make sure that the camera's still working, you're in a good position to be able to go back and quickly find that fault. And here it is, look at that basically seamless. You can't see the wiring on the back. You can't see it around the side. It's like it's never there. 
And you can just see the, the edges there, essentially, where the carpet meets the trim. That's where the wire has been just pushed under, down there, to the right, and then under the door sill. If you're attempting this job and you need some help, please give me a shout. Hopefully this video is useful. I'll also drop the cards into the other videos that I have, which um, go into a couple of these steps in a lot more detail. Um, I've got a PCM 3.1 install. I've got a step-by-step -step guide. I've got some hints and, and, you know, sort of like tips and tricks kind of videos. Um, so hopefully a combination of these DIY videos and you are all good to go. And you drive away in your Porsche that now feels factory fresh because you've got state-of-the-art technology staring you in the face instead of the old gross green screen kind of Porsche PCM experience. All right, that's it. Thanks for checking in. See you in the next video soon. Bye.